Sup y'all, welcome back. You know why you're here. No clickbait, shies and stuff while you're here, at least to get you here. We've got ourselves a PC that's come into the Technus Corner for a bit of TLC. And it is a Lenovo Y7 model specific. Specifically, we'll get into the actual specs of what we are to expect in a second's time. That being said, this PC is not the best and has seen better in time. But long story short, we're going to get her working for the client. But before we do, we're going to also assess whether maybe something like this is worthwhile for use. So we're going to have a better look at the uh, technical specifications of what to expect because this system, which is about from the era of 2015 to 17, came in many, many different configurations also. So long story short, I'm really stoked that we got something like this in because it is essentially at the base minimum a sixth generation processor, Intel processor. So if you're looking at something cheap to get yourself into gaming, it's probably the bottom line nowadays that you want to go. I'd suggest nothing lower than a sixth gen. And at the price you can get these second hand if you're savvy enough, you never know, there might be an upgrade path where you can just chuck in a better GPU for yourself and have that ready for your next system as well. So let's take a closer look. Welcome to the Technus Corner and let's go. Here we go, go, go. Alrighty, so here's the Lenovo that we've got essentially in a 360 view. Thank you to uh, probably like Newegg or something that was selling this back in the day. I'll tell you right now, everything looks rather the same on what we'll be taking a look at in a second. But just like I always do, I'd like to give a full rundown of the product, what it, regardless of what, what it is, if it's a review unboxing or a technical analysis or diagnosis and fix just so that everyone's aware and we're all on the same page of what we are all to expect it's good etiquette as well and protocol and standard that means that when you get into a machine you don't break something instantly that's the lenovo we're dealing with which frankly um, at least at brand new doesn't look half shabby in itself to be honest it's got it's quite stylish as well i'd say that being said, it brings us to what is our Lenovo Idea Center Y700. And more specifically, this model specific is from the 2015 17 model era that was produced by Lenovo. And this Idea Center is the Y700 34ISH. And it does have, and it's been confirmed, an Intel i7-6700 in place. So I got my hands on what is dated from February 2017 is the Idea Center Y700 spec sheet, otherwise known as your specification sheets. This is the official sheet from Lenovo itself from around that era, which would elaborate on what sort of system it was on the whole. And depending on you know the region that you're in and the configuration that you receive, it seems like the i7-6700 is the top of the range specced out system when it comes to CPU available for this model specific. That had an Intel HD Graphics 530 integrated graphics card with the CPU. On the other hand, 
SSDs and hard drives are, were a different story. Again, this model currently, from my understanding, has a one terabyte SSD in it, which was a replacement to what came with it, which was a hard drive. But don't fret too much if you do have a hard drive or solid state hybrid drive in it, because that's what it is. It's an SSHD. Um, and according to the spec sheet, those came from Lenovo with eight gigabytes of MLC NAND flash memory as well. So that's something to look out for, y'all. At the very least, you still want to use an SSD as a boot, but you could keep that as your storage device and it'd be not as shabby as you think. Now, all the other specs, apart from the type of graphics card that's in there and whatnot, aren't as important. It was preloaded back then with Windows 10 Home, and I believe this system, with that in mind, shall be uh, also Windows 10 Home. Graphics cards, on the other hand, varied, and you could get anything from a GDX 1070 8 gigabyte GDRR5 model, all the way down to an AMD Radeon R9 370X, or a GeForce gtx 750 ti two gigabyte which you know is something regardless but from my understanding i think we're in the 960 or 970 range regarding a two gigabyte or four gigabyte card that's in this computer that we currently have the y700 lenovo and yeah so that's the sum up of what to expect the io and everything else we'll look at furthermore once we're actually looking at the system ourselves so let's move on to the next slide as well so when it comes to um the intel core i7 6700 regarding benchmarks uh the cpu benchmark scores showcase that in a single core fashion it can do 1256 while multi-core it was 4041 now dialing in on the 6700 which i have to specify is not the k variety so this is not an unlocked chip but the good thing on that is when you're buying these second hand now they should be cheap as chips you know that at least more than likely the cpu will be in good stead or standing okay in condition but frequency wise we did have a base frequency of 3.4 gigahertz or we do and a max frequency of 4 gigahertz or 4000 megahertz core wise the only reason why i'd suggest going with an i7 from this era and no less is not because of the four cores but because of the hyper threading availability on it and the fact that you had eight threads as well which turned it into essentially eight cores TDP wise for back in its day, 65 watts was very, very efficient or quite efficient for a desktop PC. Again, to specify the Intel HD Graphics 530 is integrated into this CPU, which is good for an extra monitor, potentially or two guys. Okay, so if you've got a weak ass graphics card from that era and you want to run two monitors, don't put the toll on the graphics card, put an extra monitor onto this integrated graphics card on the cpu and it'll give you some extra frames while you're playing games if you've got the gaming essentially straight off your gpu so codename skylake is the cpu itself the i7 6700 is from that era and again and that is on an lga 1151 socketed motherboard that moves us into something I want you guys to understand because I like to be realistic as well. I've got a graph here or a chart that's got popular comparisons of this Intel i7-6700 based on 3D Mark or the CPU Mark test essentially. And these results are active as of the 11th of June 2023. So that being said, this is all the uh, all the CPUs currently that score roughly on comparison with this i7-6700 okay and the cool thing about this is if you're looking for something that's budget entry level for gaming and worthwhile in this day and age no less is what you want to get and any of these cpus will essentially score something similar in relation to that i7-6700 accordingly as you can see high results represent better performance and yeah so take this information 
too hard if you so desire. Uh, fanboyism aside, you can essentially get any one of these machines depending on what else you require with these type of CPUs and it'll give you relatively the similar performance to the i7-6700 non-K that we're looking into. On the other hand, like I mentioned earlier, 65 watts is your maximum TDP. Now on a comparison level, if you got yourself the K variety, then the boost, by the way, goes to 4.2, not 4 gigahertz, but the base is at 4 gigahertz instead of 3.4. That doesn't really mean anything, but efficiency wise, it was much more of a power hungry CPU back in its day. So 100 watts back in its day for something like this was rather beefy back in 2015. 65 watts on the other hand is currently what some of the Ryzen new generation low end SKU CPUs use. Okay, so to get a more comparison level as to how that applies, well, we can move on to our next chart, which is the CPU mark relative top 10 common desktop CPUs. So this is a chart that showcases common desktop CPUs with the same CPU mark tests. Okay, so as you can see at the bottom of the tree, we've got the 8085 CPU mark score that represents our i7-6700. Now, don't feel dismayed if you're getting a system like this, okay? Because it's all relative to price for performance. And as you will notice, as we go up in the SKUs, or as we go up in the chart, what you'll find is that the top end spectrum is a common desktop CPU such as your i9 12900K, so last generation Intel top of the end, and this is the result it was getting. So within reason, if you were to sort of multiply the cost of what you pay for something like this, which I'd say in this day and age would be more than three to four hundred dollars, including a GPU. OK, then to get that 40,000 score, you're going to have to at least multiply that by five or more. Get me for a, a PC of that caliber itself. So it, it gives you relative scoring and a structure that you guys can see where it falls in line in relation to much more common desktops in this day and age. OK. So pressing on, y'all, we've got ourselves the Intel i7-6700. And is it good for gaming? So again, this is relative to a gaming score benchmark, okay? And with that being said, again, it's at the bottom end of the spectrum. But what it's competing with is current generation, top of the echelon, newest and greatest, essentially, if you want to go that way, CPUs. Okay, so again, it's at the bottom end of the charts, but if you looked at the price accordingly of what would be, say, a 7800X3D, to reach that score here, obviously it's got better performance, okay? But the chip itself is going to cost you twice the amount of this whole system as well. So as an entry level system, what we're trying to establish in this day and age is whether it's worth it for you all, or maybe you're doing the flip or something, right? And you can get these really cheap and put them into a nice case if you're not happy with this case as well. But that being said, you know, I'll leave that up to you. I'm just giving you guys the information and a rundown before we get into this PC ourselves. So you can already see there's a little bit of a hint hint here as we start to open the door to what we are going to be looking at. But uh, just making sure that you guys understand clear as day, I've got more specs here and I promise this is the last slide today where the CPU mark is again with the i7-6700 over here in the first lane with further specs to compare to not only the K, which is only a little higher, but from the same era. But if you look at this number here and the percentage below it, that's the difference that it's behind on the negative to the maximum in the group that we've got here, right? 
and the top of the echelon at best score that was received was 62,379. And that's from an Intel Core i9, current gen 13900KS, the pinnacle of the crop of CPUs available on the consumer level. And it can turbo speed up to six gigahertz, unlike the four gigahertz on the i7-6700. If it was any less, I wouldn't even suggest this as a viable option, but you have to understand that to get to that level, that CPU in Australia, at the very least, costs you over a thousand dollars by itself, okay? But with that extra cost, you pay for what you got, and it'll give you a 87% increase in performance in relation to what is the i7-6700 from back in the around the 2015 era of quarter three when it was first released, okay? On another comparison level, just as a throwaway, if you were to say get yourself something like an 5 2600 Ryzen now, thinking that that could work for you, okay? I know my client was thinking about that as an upgrade path himself, okay? Unfortunately, you would need to buy, for in his case, the whole platform as well. Yes, there will be an increase, okay? The CPU by itself, you can get these for around 60 Australian dollars nowadays, but understand you're going to have to buy everything else inclusive, okay? And that will give you the ability to get something that's a little better than what is over here on the i7. But the difference is if you can get this whole platform entry, and this came out three years after the fact, at a relatively cheap price, once you're ready, you can get what is essentially an upgrade in the same platform, which is AM4, even though Ryzen's up to AM5 now, but you can get in the same platform, a drop-in CPU. I'd suggest the best gaming CPU for Ryzen, probably to date, but from the last era, was your Ryzen 7 5800X3D. And if you've got something that's running this, maybe with a BIOS upgrade if needed, can regardless be dropped into it. And that'll boost that performance upwards to this. But that's the max you're going to get. Understand this. That's where you're capped on the AM4 platform and you won't be able to get any more. But as an upgrade path budget entry level, this is also a good alternative if you're willing to spend a little more and get together the whole thing because then you've got something extra that you can work for once these chips are being sold secondhand in the market as well. Cutting a long story short, like I said, that's where it ends with Ryzen as well because what essentially is the pinnacle in this day and age? So only maybe a year and a half later, you're going from 28,191 to what Intel unleashed, which is almost literally 33% stronger on our current gen level to receive a score like this is also pretty impressive, you have to admit. So that being said, that's a roundup of the i7-6700 and essentially this Lenovo gaming pre-built PC. If you got the information you need, you're more than welcome to uh, leave. But if you want to see the internals of our specific one, then welcome again to the Technus Corner. Good time perhaps to hit the like and subscribe button because now it's us opening this PC that we've been talking about for the last five minutes or so. And yeah, let's have a closer look at what is the Lenovo Y7 Gaming Pre-Built Idea Center, God, it's a tongue tire PC, and what we have to deal with ourselves. So let's go, guys and girls. One thing you wanna always <coughs> make sure of is regarding fans, you're not letting them spin, or you let them spin as least amount of time as possible, because you will stuff the mechanisms out there usually not rated to rotate as fast as one of these can push them. These do have that grimy texture to them, so they'll need to be wiped down as well after the fact.
but doesn't get everything off. At least it takes off the sediment, which is uh, pretty much breathable, or which you end up breathing in because it's so loose. Always be careful with certain uh, cables as well, so they don't rip them off where they're at. The what looks like a spider's nest. Most important thing I want to get done here is the power supply, though. You can almost see the uh, air flexing this, which is actually proper metal, so it gives an indication of how strong these DAT backs are. Electric duster, and this is the ECD version, which means uh, it's not likely to short out shit while you're doing it. These are made in the USA. I'll get a review on them if anyone's interested. Uh, when you're unboxing, just check it out uh, by subscribing to the Techies Corner. And yeah, you'll find it in there somewhere amongst all the other videos I've got. Now for the most important part, I'm trying to minimize the impact of having to take this power supply out. Not difficult to unscrew these in the Lenovo's, at least this model, the Y700, but just the uh, cable management on the back and everything and how it's routed, alongside all the smaller proprietary cables and how they're routed in the machine, it um, would just add an extra time if you can avoid it. That being said, watch out y'all because it's going to get messy now, I believe. I'll try to start from top to bottom. Uh, you realize that with these, it's a good reason to do so because uh, otherwise the dust will just accumulate back onto it. where you want to probably not even disconnect the stuff if you can avoid it. All over me guys. And we're done. So during summer, these dat backs get very, very hot. Don't feel it now, but if it's 40 degrees, because obviously it sucks air in, here's a filter for them, already uh, caxes. Yeah, you just want to um, make sure you don't burn yourself, frankly. Little kitchen uses during summer, that's how hot they get. Right now though, it's not even warm to the touch. It's one of those items where they say essentially, you know, 40 degree operating te temperature max, and you actually probably want to adhere to it. Unlike our televisions and whatnot, which generally say the same thing, they end up uh, working non-stop for years, but you can be held accountable. So worst things out of this are usually the fans, but as long as you get that sentiment off, you don't have to breathe it in continuously. And these will just require professional wipe down as well. Where it's just, uh, it's just more, it's more a technique to wipe it down. Otherwise you can take forever as well. But this part here, I'm happy with that. That was really grotty. So those parts around there and um, Hopefully, if the PSU is having or struggling with anything, the majority of the, over here, the majority of the crapiola in there has been omitted. So I'll meet you guys back in the Technus Corner. We'll put it back together again, probably. And as a result, start her up then, sort of the back, the front way I normally do stuff. But um, if it's broke, at least it's got a clean broke system. The client or the gentleman that uh, gave me the privilege of working on this if it's not then it's ready to rock and roll and we can pretty much boot up windows and be done with it i already looked at the um ssd which i was meant to salvage some stuff from and 
unfortunately that was irreparable the operating system was damaged beyond repair and the files themselves were corrupted in some way shape or form they were all on that ssd so yeah that's a shame but at least the system more than likely was just a software issue and worst case scenario i can still think of maybe a bios update if i can get one for this system that will be needed to make sure that this doesn't occur again so back to the technics corner we go and i'll see you guys here in a second Alrighty, so back in the technos corner we are and things move really fast even at the technos corner at times where as you can see behind me the lenovo y700 gaming monster that it was for its era we'd have to say is already gone gone back to its owner done and dusted shall we say but to cut a long story short, or should I say even longer, um, I'll give you guys a spiel and a rundown of what essentially had to be done with the machine after it was put back together again. And I'll refer to my notes just so that we can go through the marathon that it was of, of dealing with this, just so you guys can see semblance of uh, what happened for the diagnostical part of things. It had the blue screen of depth to rule out hardware failure, essentially, was a matter of cleaning everything and making sure there were no problems with it physically okay on the bios level did a default check and set up accordingly so it seemed to be running fine on this level uh so we did the complete tear down of the machine because it really needed it as you could tell enabled the ssd which was a samsung ssd to load up windows and experience the problem which was the blue screen of death, attempted repair of Windows times three times and failed. Attempted repair then initiated a system restore point. Okay. This failed at restore point one. Attempted restore point two. Only one left, unfortunately. It seemed to work. Upon restart, the blue screen omitted itself again and the restore point number two failed as well. In an attempt to salvage the drive contents, media, because uh, like I mentioned earlier, it was really corrupted, the uh, OS itself, probably to the kernel level. For video, photos, I manually plugged it into another machine, the drive that is, and scraped the drive of all the files which were not heavily, if not at all, corrupted, Let's uh, leaving it at that. So I hard formatted the SSD after the fact and reinstalled Windows 10 Home so that on a digital license scale, it could be reactivated. I would have preferred to install Windows 10 Pro then, but obviously a new key would have been required as well. Installed all the chipset and graphics card drivers subsequently after the fact. Installed all operating system updates for Windows 10 Home to the current level and the newest graphics card driver applicable for the GTX 960, which it was. Tested the system with loading and benchmark tests and whatnot. And yeah, the system seemed to be as good as new. So it fell in line where it should have been in Cinebench R15. On the scale of things, it got roughly about 799 points at its peak before any Windows updates decided to diminish its performance. Also on the back end, I took all of the background apps and whatnot and made sure they weren't running. Did all the privacy mumbo jumbo for the client so that he wouldn't have to go through the process of turning off all these things that are just telemetry in relation to Windows 10 probably worse with windows 11 and yeah there was approximately 66 gigabytes worth of data of files that were extracted successfully and with that being said uh, i left these on the desktop for the client to examine and adore depending on what sort of files they exactly were 
But long story short, uh, his wedding was rather beautiful, I'd have to say. And I hope he enjoys reminiscing on all his old media that I managed to salvage as well. So my name's Seb Luca. Thanks for joining us at the Technus Corner. Unfortunately, there's no B-roll footage on the way out of the machine because she's already gone. But yeah, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button for more of this sort of stuff. Unboxings, reviews, overviews, and anything PC tech related. And yeah, peace out, y'all. Bye.